my blessed King. In His light I'm going home to glory, with the souls who trust His saving grace, going home to sing and tell His story. In the blessed sunshine of His face, He's my precious King, and though I dearly love Him, He's my glorious King, no other is above Him. All day long, in rapture praise I sing, I sing. He's my blessed Savior, He's my King, my blessed King. 324. Three, two, four. <clears throat> Alas, and did my Savior bleed.
The reading this morning will come from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. Remember that Jesus Christ, of the son of, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as it, an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Our Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves before you this morning, thanking you for this beautiful Lord's Day that you have made for us, that you've given us a, a measure of health that we can be up and about and doing the things that we need to do, and especially to come to your house to worship you. And this morning, may, may the songs that we sing and uh, the lesson that we hear be according to your will and pleasing to you. And also be the truth. We thank you for the word that you left with us that guides us in this life. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. It tells us how we should conduct ourselves as we walk the pathways of this life and how we should treat one another and how we should treat our fellow man. We thank you for this word and help us to live by it. We thank you for the great gift of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that was willing to suffer the agony of the cross and the agony of our sins that was put on him that day. We thank you for this great blessing that we can be free from your sins when we're obedient to you and confess our sins. Because we know there are many. Because we are weak and sinful here on this earth. We beg for your forgiveness and your mercy. We thank you for this country in which we live and the freedoms that we enjoy, especially to be here this morning as we are. And we pray that this blessing will be ours until Christ returns to deliver the kingdom to you, the Father. We pray your blessings on those that are sick, those that are suffering. We pray for our president that has this plague and also the first lady that has this plague, oh God, that you would heal them and all the others that have it, especially those of the household of faith. We thank you for being our God and being there for us. Bless God as you present your word to us this morning, and bless us as hearers and then doers of your word. And we also pray for those that can't be here for the reasons that's, uh, that are stated, that uh, this plague that is, is affecting the whole world, we pray, O oh God, that you will end it soon. Bless us as we worship you here this morning. And thank you for our homes and the families you bless us with and our spiritual family here this morning. And bless all those that are worship, worshiping you in spirit and in truth today and those that preach your word. And may they preach the cross to a lost and dying world. Bless those in foreign countries that preach your word, that give them the health and the strength that they need for those that hunger and thirst for your word. Bless us this morning, and thank you for your Son in his name. Amen. Amen. This is 606. Jesus. 
There we go. Remind me is uh, the topic today. We'll uh, we'll get this all calmed down in a minute. Okay. Uh, you know, on my phone and you're on your phone, you have a clock, and part of that clock there are alarms on there. And I don't know about you, but uh, I saw my optometrist a week or so ago, and I've had some dry eye problems, and so she told me to put drops in my eyes more often. So in the middle of the day, I'm needing to put drops in my eyes. Well, for the first two or three days, I'd come home, Don, and say, did you put drops in your eyes? And I'd say, no. <laughs> because, like all of us, you get busy, don't you? You're busy, and your mind's on other things. You're not thinking about that. But you know what? Now I have an alarm in my phone. And luckily, I was smart enough this morning even to take Sunday off so that about 11.30, it, my phone won't go off, start playing my alarm to remind me to put drops in my eyes. So, you know, we have little gadgets like that and they are helpful reminders to us. The old thing people used to do before they had smartphones they just tied a string around their finger. You know, that's what you would do. The thing about a smartphone, though, is it says right on there, drops. So I know what it is. When I look at a string on my finger, I'm not sure, <laughs> you know, what to put it there for. But your phone will actually tell you. There was a man that went for his checkup, and he was looking a little worried when the doctor came in. And... Uh, he said to the man, you know, if something was troubling him, and he said, well, to tell the truth, Doc, yes. You see, I seem to be getting forgetful. I never can remember where I put the car or whether I answered a letter or whether I was going or, you know, what I'm going to do once I get there, if I get there. So I really need your help. What can I do? And the doctor mused for a moment. And then he answered in his kindest tone, please pay me in advance. <laughs> Smart doctor. One lady was talking to her friend. She said, you know, she had an ailing memory, so she said, I'm thinking of changing my password to incorrect. That way when I log in, the password, the computer will tell me, your password is incorrect. Another old fellow said, I'm not getting old. I just can't remember stuff because my brain is full. A lot of us have that. The biggest lie I tell myself is I don't need to write it down. I'll remember it. Uh, so a lot of us write it down and we forget where we put it. How about this support group for forgetful folks? Hi, my name is Ken. 
And all the crowd says, hi, Larry. <laughs> My bed is a magical place where I suddenly remember everything I was supposed to do that day. A lot of us are like that. And then most of us have the poo syndrome. I haven't forgot. I just can't remember. So, forgetting things. You know, memory problems are more common than we may think. And it's normal to forget things from time to time. It's normal uh, you know, to become somewhat more forgetful as you age. And of course, the old lady said, you know, my brain is like the Bermuda Triangle. Information goes in and then it's never found again. Well, the Mayo Clinic has seven tips for you to use to help you improve your memory. The first one is to include physical activity in your daily routine. Because physical activity increases blood flow to your whole body, including your brain. So you need a little physical activity. I think they usually say about 30 minutes. Stay mentally active. Uh, some people do this by doing brain teasers or little things like that. They, they try to do some games or things like that to keep them mentally uh, active. Socialize regularly. Well, we've had a little problem with that of late, although you can socialize on... Uh, your phone, of course, with social media, but actually getting together and probably, you know, most of us do miss the physical uh, activity with one another and socializing. How about this one? Get organized. That means probably make some lists and, you know, do some things. You know, in other words, it's not like the, uh, you know, you've, you've seen that one where you go in, the desk is all a mess and you know, the guy is talking about how that he, he has everything organized. He knows where it is. Sleep well. Well, a lot of us like to do that. <laughs> uh, some of us have trouble sleeping. But we need sleep, you know. Some say seven hours, eight hours, some less, some more. And I think, you know, physically different individuals need a different amount. And then eat a healthy diet is another one. Uh, whatever that may mean for you. And then manage chronic conditions. If we have underlying health issues, we need to stay on top of those. You know, in the book of Isaiah, the 49th chapter, verses 14 through 16, and Jesus was addressing this to the city of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem in the Old Testament is sometimes referred to as Zion or Mount Zion. So He said, but, Z but Zion said, oh, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. And the Lord answers, Can a woman forget her nursing child or lack compassion for the son of her womb? Even if she could forget, I will not forget you. Behold, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. And that's a very uh, striking illustration or metaphor that's used here. Can a woman forget her child? You know, you, that's something that's impossible to do. I mean, there are some that are not, sometimes women are not very motherly even until they have a child and then they become uh, very motherly. So the Lord is saying, I'm not going to forget you. And so aren't we thankful that the Lord has promised not to forget us? And what should our response be to this? I think Psalm 103 expresses one way in which we should respond to the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. Who forgives all of your iniquities. Who heals all of your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And so our response to what the Lord has promised to be good to us and not to forget us, and as we know, He does a lot of these things for us even when we are very undeserving of what He's done. Well, we want to look at a little bit at the passage that we read today from Second Timothy. Uh, the second chapter. And what Paul <clears throat> told Timothy to remember there in that passage, he first of all told him to remember God's Son. And then secondly, he told him to remember God's Word. 
And thirdly, he told him to remember God's elect or God's people. So first we'll look at remembering God's Son. Over in Philippians, the second chapter, Paul writing to the Philippians said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted Him and given Him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, when we are thinking about the Son of God and we're remembering Him, this passage is, I think, uh, one that's very full of things that we need to remember about Jesus. First of all, that He was in heaven. He was in glory. He emptied Himself. He did not consider that as something to be grasped or to cling to. And He was willing to come to the earth and to suffer in the flesh as we suffer. And when it talks about His humility here, you know, sometimes I think we tend to just pass over that. You know, well, He humbled Himself. How did He humble Himself? Well, of course, He often said, I came not to do my own will, but the will of Him that sent me. And my need is to do the will of Him that sent me, of Him that sent me and to finish His work. But I think of all the other ways in which the Lord humbled Himself. He humbled Himself in the fact that he was with common people. You know, even some of the religious leaders would uh, accuse him, said, you know, why is he eating with publicans and sinners? Why does he just run around with all the riffraff? He humbled himself in that way. He humbled himself in the fact that even when he was arrested and was being accused, that he didn't open his mouth, he didn't argue. And how often as we look at the ministry of Jesus do we find such humility? Remember, He is the Creator. <laughs> he is the One who made everything. And yet He was willing to humble Himself and come in the form of a man. And not as you know the big cheese, the big guy that tells everybody what to do, but He humbled Himself. And He came and He was in humility before others. He didn't lord it over others. And so, we need to have this mind that Paul said was also in Christ Jesus. Remembering God's Son in Acts 2, verses 23 and 24 in the sermon that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. And speaking of Jesus, he said, Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified, and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. You know, this is what Paul mentioned here in uh, 2 Timothy 2. He said, remember, you know, Jesus or the Christ who according to my Gospel was raised from the dead. You know, 1 Corinthians 15 talks about the uh, different ones who saw Christ after His resurrection. And on one occasion, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, according to 1 Corinthians 15. And then Paul finally says, and last of all, he was seen by me as one born out of due season. So, Paul also, the Lord appeared to him after his resurrection, but it was not possible for death to hold him. He was raised from the dead. And so when we remember the Lord, we need to remember that He was raised. He did not remain in the tomb. In a familiar passage in 1 Corinthians 11, as we'll celebrate here in a little while, Paul wrote, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which He was betrayed, took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, Take, eat, this is My body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of Me. In the same manner, He also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in My blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of Me. For as often as you eat 
this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. I don't know about you, but to me this seems a very important thing that we need to do to remember the Lord's Son. It is one of the only things that Jesus specifically asked us to do was to eat of the bread and drink of the cup in remembrance of Him. And so I think this needs to be something that is a high priority in our lives in remembering uh, our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, Paul said to remember God's Word. He talked about the Gospel that he preached. In Psalm 1, the psalmist said, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You know, in this psalm, we have two people. We have two ways that are described And of course, we have two destinies. And again, the imagery that's used here is very uh, dramatic and very striking. You have the tree that's planted by the rivers of water that's well watered and that is producing fruit in its season and it's just lush and everything is good about it. And that is the man who delights in God's Word. And then you have on the other hand the chaff which the wind drives away. Now, you know, the tree can withstand great winds, but chaff can't withstand even the slightest breeze. I've often told you when visiting India, the way they used to thrash some of their uh, grain out in the fields, you'd be driving out through the countryside and they'd have their grain on the road and the cars would run over it and kind of beat it out. And then they'd be on the back of their carts with the winnowing baskets tossing the grain in the air, and the wind would just blow all the husk away. and you just blow away. That's the striking image here. You have this tree that's planted and it's producing fruit, and you have the chaff, which is the slightest little thing. Just blows it wherever. You know, it reminds me of the other uh, thing that Paul wrote in Ephesians, that we shouldn't be carried about by every wind of doctrine. You know, we need to be in the Word. We need to be studying God's Word so we know the difference between right and wrong. We're not carried about by every wind of doctrine, but rather we are firmly rooted in His Word. Psalm 1 is about that man who is firmly rooted in the Word of God. We need to remember God's Word for success. During the reign of Queen Victoria, the empire of England climbed to its height in power and territory. And once when asked by a foreign uh, prince the secret of her country's greatness, Queen Victoria replied, the Bible, my Lord, is the secret of our greatness. I tell you, I know another country that could say the same thing. Because this country in which we live was built upon a lot of those same principles that come from the Word of God. And how far we have strayed from those in our day. And I know I pray and I know you pray for a return to this anchor that we need. A return to God's Word and the principles of His Word. And get away from just everybody saying that whatever they want is what God wants. That's not true. A lot of people think just God is just there to help me get whatever I want. That's not the way it is. God gave us His Word. God calls us to humility. As Paul said in the passage we looked at in Philippians 2, let this mind be in you that was in Christ. Well, that's not a mind. When you look at Christ, He was always saying, I came to do the Father's will. My own will is not what matters here. 
It isn't what I want, it's what the Father wants. And so that's what we've been called to, and that's what the Word of God calls us to. In America, we're having this slogan passed around, make America great again. There's only one way to do that, and that's to get back to the principles of God's Word. He also said to remember God's elect. Romans the 10th chapter verses 1 through 4 Paul in talking about his Jewish brethren said brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved for I bear them record or witness that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. You know, this passage again opens up what we just mentioned here. It isn't what I think is right. It's what God says is right. You know, earlier in this book in uh, Romans 1, uh, about verses 16 and 17, Paul had said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Where is the righteousness of God revealed? In the Gospel. That's where His righteousness is revealed. And so Paul said, my fellow Jews, they, they're going about trying to establish their own righteousness and they have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. And so as he was thinking about his brethren in the flesh, his prayer for them is that they would be saved. That their eyes would be opened to the truth and to the righteousness that is of God. In 1 Timothy 2, verses 1-5, through the Apostle Paul wrote, Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. You know, God is not willing that any should perish. God wants all men to be saved. But in order to do that, we must come to a knowledge of the truth. In order to do that, we must submit to the righteousness of God. It will never happen as long as we're just trying to go our own way or we're just saying, whatever I want, God, that's what you have to be on board with. We will never accomplish that until we submit to the righteousness of God. You know, there's a passage in Luke. Remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And remember, Lazarus laid at the rich man's gate. He maybe ate some of the scraps from the table of the rich man. The dogs came and licked his sores. We don't know how often the rich man passed by there or if he even noticed Lazarus. I guess he did know who he was though. But one day they both died. Remember in the story, one is carried away, Lazarus dies and is carried away by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man dies and he wakes up and finds himself in Hades. And there's this great gulf fixed between paradise and Hades and there's Lazarus up in Abraham's bosom in paradise and here's this rich man down in Hades And he's looking up there. Remember he said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he may dip his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. And the answer was, of course, there's a great gulf fix. Those that are there can't come here and those that are here can't go there. But this is also something else that he said to him. Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here and you were in agony. You know, we may be forgetful throughout our life, not remembering God's Son, not remembering God's Word, not remembering God's elect. However, there may come a time 
that we do remember some things that we wish we could forget. And wouldn't it be an agony to lift up your eyes in torment and to be able to remember and think, oh, I wished I had done that. Oh, I wished I had done that. And you would wish that you could forget that. You wish that's something that you could not remember. In the song that we sang after prayer today before the lesson written by Dottie Rambo entitled, Remind Me, Dear Lord. The essence of that song is captured in Psalm 24 and verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The things that I love and hold dear to my heart are just borrowed. They're not mine at all. Jesus only lets me use them to brighten my life. So remind me. Remind me, dear Lord. Man, we need reminding on that, don't we? That's my house, my car, my son, my daughter. This is mine, and that's mine. And and we go down through the list, and we think we own all these things, and we don't own a blessed thing. Remember, Job? Naked I came into the world, and naked I'll go out. As the old saying was, there's no hue halls, you know, going to the graveyard. You just don't need one. So we need to be reminded that all these things are just given to us and we're to be just stewards over them. Nothing good have I done to deserve God's own Son. I'm not worthy of the scars in His hands. Yet He chose the road to Calvary to die in my stead. Remember we read from Philippians 2 that He did not consider equality with God as something to be grasped, but He emptied Himself of glory and came in the flesh and lived and died on the cross and took the scars in His hands. He chose that road to Calvary in my stead. He took my place when He went to Calvary. Why He loved me, I can't understand. And I tell you what, sometimes I look at things that I've done and blunders that I've made and things that I still may think or things that I still may do and I can only shake my head and say, how in the world could God love? And that song we sang earlier today, they took the word worm out and used the word one. I think I sang worm this morning because that's the way I remember it. But that gets it, doesn't it? A worm such as I, you know, that's really says it better than one such as I. Uh, They they blew it when they took that word out of that song. You know, why he loved me, I can't understand. Roll back the curtain of memory now and then. You know, let's get the curtain rolled back so we can see, so we can remember. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. You know, if I hadn't had the Lord, where would I have wound up? If I had gone my own way, thinking the way I did, maybe believing things that I believe, where would I have wound up? Just remember, I'm human. And humans forget. And we do because we get busy and we forget things. We're just forgetful. So remind me. Remind me, dear Lord. You know, we need to be reminded. And that's why, again, I think it's important that we do come around the Lord's table every Lord's Day to be reminded again. It reminds us. It's a a, a way of rolling back the curtain and reminding us of these truths that we need to remember about God's Son and about God's Word and about God's elect. That's us. His people. His children. The key, of course, is to remember God in our youth. You know, In Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1, the wise man said, Remember your Creator in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you say, I find no pleasure in them. And of course, he then begins to describe the aging process, you know, this forgetfulness, and not only that, but, you know, the teeth ain't what they used to be, not only the mind, not what it used to be, 
And all the rest of me is not what it used to be. In the words of that old song, the old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. And that's true. That happens to all of us. That's the way of the flesh. But, what the wise man is saying is that we need to remember the Lord in the days of our youth while these evil days come not. While we still have energy and strength to serve Him. And let me tell you, when we do remember Him, and of course at any age is a good time to remember Him, but especially in your youth, but it is a decision that you will never regret. You're not going to wake up in Hades someday and regret that you remembered your Creator and your Lord. That you remembered God's Son. That you remembered His Word. That you remembered His people. That's not going to be a regret for you. You'll be in a different place. You know, this is our whole duty, as the wise man said later in that same chapter in verse 13, fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You know, God wants all men to be saved, and we need to remember that. We don't want to withhold His Word from anyone or ever to deem anyone unworthy of the Lord's salvation. In 2 Peter 3 and verse 9, the Apostle Peter wrote, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what? To repentance. You see, it isn't just God just going to save everybody irregardless. The Bible never teaches that. There is repentance that's called for. God doesn't want anyone to be lost, that's for sure. And so He's calling them. He is inviting them to repent and to come to Him. You know, Jesus told some, it's recorded in Luke 13, there were a couple of things that had happened uh, one, there was a tower at Siloam that had fallen upon some, and then certain ones that had gone up to worship and Pilate had mingled their blood with the sacrifices that were taken. And so these were news items, you know, like we'd see in the headlines today. Tower falls on so many in Siloam. Pilate mingles his blood of the sacrificers with these sacri- people that went to offer sacrifice, and a lot of them were saying, whew, those must have been bad folks have things like that happen to them. And Jesus said, inciting these examples, said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. My friend, there's not any of us that don't need repentance, and that includes me. (laughs) That's something that we constantly have to do. We have to change our ways. We have to change our minds sometimes about things. And may the Lord give us the grace that we need to first understand the changes that we need to make and then the will to make them. And by His help and His Spirit, hopefully we can do that. So, we want to be reminded. We need the Lord to remind us. And we want to remember God's Son. We want to remember God's Word. And we want to remember God's elect. If you're a gospel subject today, we can assist in any way we invite you to come while we sing. Oh, 
come to the time in our service that we stop and remember what the Lord has done for us. That He was wounded for us and that He was sacrificed on that tree for our sins. And we gather around this table to partake of the bread which is His body and the cup which is the blood that was shed on that cross for our sins. As that you bow as we give thanks for the bread. Lord Jesus, we come to you thanking you for your Son Jesus that you sent for us we thank you for your son who uh, came to be the example that we need to be, that we need to live by. We ask, Lord, that as we partake of this bread, that we'll do so in a way that's pleasing in your sight. It's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We also have the cup, which was his blood. We ask that you bow as we give thanks for this cup. Lord Jesus, we continue our thanks to you for your son, for his sacrifice for us. We thank you for this blood which washes away our sins, that we may be able to be with you someday in heaven. We ask, Lord, you'd help us partake of this in a way that's pleasing to you. Is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen.
That concludes the Lord's Supper. Is also asked to to remember to lay by in store for Him, so that we can still take care of the things that we need to for Him, for the church here, and for those who need our help. And we ask that you bow as we give thanks for our temporal blessings. Dear Lord, thank you for all that you have blessed us with. We thank you for our homes, our families, our jobs, and we pray, Lord, that we will remember that they are just borrowed, that they're not ours at all, that we will use them to further your word wherever we are and wherever we go. We ask, Lord, that we give back a portion of what you have blessed us with so that we may be able to do this. It's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Scott, thank you for another good lesson this morning. Um, as far as our announcements go, we're going to meet, the men will meet next door uh, this morning for a, for our quarterly meeting. Yes. We're going to meet here, Lance, because we didn't know when we first did that. We're going to have to be having dinner. They'll be over there getting stuff ready, so we'll just meet in here. Okay, so the men can just stay in here, and yeah. we'll have our meeting here. And then... Uh, Following that, we'll have uh, lunch together next door. Um, so make sure you, you stay for that. Um, then as far as our announcements, uh, Rachel has, of course, tore her ACL, and, and uh, they plan on having that repaired the next couple of weeks. Weston Williams is better. Uh, Justin Spurlock has tested negative for COVID. Uh, and then as you get a bulletin, you can see there are a lot of people in here that are uh, in bad health and, and needing our prayers so make sure that you keep these people in your prayers at home as well as here and I believe that is all that I have unless there's something else that needs to be announced nope okay if you would then stand and Travis please dismiss us our most blessed brother and our savior we're so thankful for this day and the privilege and opportunity to live thankful for all the things that you have given us and we pray that you would continue to give us those blessings and abundance we pray that you would increase our faith and we pray that we will remember those things that we have heard today in our daily lives apply them we pray that we would become better christians we pray that you would save us protect us and guide us this is our prayer in jesus christ holy name Amen. Mm -hmm.